Good day, everyone. A warm welcome to EDGE, a Netco product event, where we'll be presenting the latest and cutting edge advancements with Netco Cloud. Today, I'll be your host. My name is Pradeep Kangaraju. I head customer marketing at Netco Cloud. I roughly come with about 12 years of experience in customer success and uh, product marketing. And uh, I'm very excited to host all of you today. As part of the agenda, we'll be covering various uh, latest features uh, spanning from product experience to uh, journeys. And then we'll be covering a couple of uh, uh, latest features uh, from AI ML. Uh, then we will touch base on uh, some bit of retail analytics as well. Um, so we got a lot to cover. So let's dive right. Um, small introduction here about our group CEO, Mr. Kalpit Jain. Kalpit has been with Netco Cloud for almost uh, two decades. Uh, under his leadership, Netco Cloud has expanded to several markets, to SEA, uh, US, and Europe. Welcoming you, Kalpit. Uh, over to you. Thanks, Pradeep. Uh, thanks for the introduction. Uh, a warm welcome to everyone. Uh, thank you, everyone, for for being here. Uh, and it's a real pleasure to to have off, uh, to have all of y'all over here. Let me quickly uh, start my presentation. Okay, before I kind of get into my keynote, uh, I'd like to thank each one of you, each one of our customers, each one of our partners uh, for being here. Uh, and not just for being here, but I think the more important thing is you've helped Netcore constantly evolve and become a better uh, platform every day of the year so that we can basically help you deliver more personalized communications. We can help you build contextual engagements across multiple channels where your customers are present. And at the same time, we can help you improve your overall customer experience. So thank you everyone for, for, for continuously guiding us, for continuously encouraging us and inspiring us to do better on every, uh, on every single day. Let's quickly look at some of the key things uh, at Netcore which have happened in 2021. And it's been a very uh, roller coaster year, I would say, for all of us. Uh, last 18 months have been the pandemic months where a lot of businesses have seen massive digital acceleration. And a lot of businesses have seen a lot of growth coming because of the whole digital uh, adoption which has happened within the consumers. And at Netcore, we've really worked very hard to help a lot of these businesses kind of achieve a lot of success because of the entire digital growth which has been happening. And over the last 12 odd months, we've kind of added a lot of customers who have kind of gone onto our platform and probably you know, leverage the benefit of how they can really engage and communicate with their customers better. We've added customers across verticals, be it FinTech, EduTech, uh, banking, financials, and D2C, I think, which is one of the most important categories which have, I think, you know, benefited the most from this entire pandemic. We've added customers across geographies. Uh, this year has been a year where we've actually expanded our offices in, in Europe, in LATAM, in Australia. And we've seen some very good customers coming from those markets also. The second big area where I think Netco has really uh, worked very hard over the last 12 months has been the, the scale at which our customers would like to use our platform. And let me share this number, 1 trillion. 1 trillion is the total interactions our customers have had with their consumers in the last one year. That's a large, that's, that's a huge number of uh, you know, communications and events which our platforms have tracked. More than half a trillion communications across push notifications, email, WhatsApp, SMS have gone through our platform. And not just that, we've also actually analyzed and processed almost a half a trillion customer events, which have really helped brands build better journeys and orchestrations for their consumers. The third big area I think we've seen at Netcore has been the overall adoption, the way brands have uh, you know, adopted our entire MLAI platform called Raman. Raman has been our, our, our engine behind a lot of the interesting insights uh, which our brands have been benefiting from. Uh, and it has thrown a lot of interesting capabilities back to our customers where brands are now able to see which segment of customers are actually going to churn out, which segment of customers require, uh, what kind of product recommendations so that they can really enjoy the experience and really get the most out of the brand uh, in, in the shortest possible time. 
at the same time some very intelligent insights on what's really going to happen with a cohort of customers are they really going to churn out are they really going to you know abandon the cart and, and things like that so i think the overall machine learning and ai adoption within our within our platform and for our customers have been phenomenally great over the last uh, 12 months or so at netcore one of the most important things which we always believed is that the need of the market has continuously kept evolving and increasing and the only way we think we can actually help our customers better is not just building a lot of the stuff in house but also probably partnering with companies who actually have similar kind of products or or or, or products which are very adjacent to a lot of things which we do and over the last 2 or 3 years one of the core important areas of what netcore also have been focusing on is is to look at acquiring companies uh, which have adjacent products to what we have or probably partner with companies who have who have platform which can really help our customers we started our, one of our acquisitions in the in the product recommendation and the personalization space called box.ai in 2019 and late 2020 early 2021 is where we acquired hansel.io uh, and you'll hear a lot more about hansel.io when kedar comes on the stage but it basically an, uh, uh, one of the products which has really helped brands do a lot of contextual walkthroughs and nudges ap with absolutely no code uh, within, within the app or the website we also have strategic investments now in companies like profit wheel which is primarily a, a platform which really helps you optimize your advertising spend by looking at your marketing tech data by looking at your first party data and at the same time we also have partner with companies like easy rewards where actually you can now start creating loyalty programs uh, to engage with your customers 2021 again at the end of 2021 we were also kind of invested in a company which is a martech consulting company one of the things which we've seen that the entire marketing stack is getting a lot more complex uh, over a period of time and there are companies who really are looking out for help on uh, on 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 basically agency who can come and help them deploy the entire stack or even come and manage the entire stack and this is one of those companies which can really help them manage the entire market stack uh, the martech stack a lot more better just around end of 2021 hopefully in uh, maybe december and or jan 2022 uh, you should hear one more large uh, acquisition announcement from netco as we go forward nothing beats a happy customer and happy employees and i think some of these recognitions which we've kind of got over the last 12 months have really be a testament to a lot of the good work i think we've been doing for our employees and for our customers one of the most important highlights for the year was the gartner uh, peer insights report and netcore was the only company which kind of got uh, you know in the right hand side quadrant of the uh, on the on the customer badge report and uh, at the same time we've also been recognized as a great great place to work uh, and a leader in the in the in the in the g2 crowd also so overall it's been a very exciting 2021 for us uh, we we know there have been a lot of area i think we could have really done better but i think uh given given all the all the things we've been doing i think this has been a great uh, year for us so far what next right that's the biggest uh, thing for us as a company as a product company one of the most important things we need we really do uh, when we continuously kind of keep talking to our customers to understand what are their next big challenges when it comes to how do they want to engage with their customers better how do they really want to uh you know probably build like better lifetime value from their customers and some there are two clear uh, uh things which kind of came out in many of these conversations which we've had with our customers one is where a lot of brands have come to us and kind of been saying that there's a lot of attention recession which they have seen from their consumers today as we all know as consumers there's so much of communication we all get from multiple brands it could be over an email it could be over an sms it could be over a whatsapp or or it could be over a push notification and one of the biggest expectations we have uh, we've seen from our customers is how do we really get our consumers uh, basically look at our look at the communication which we are sending how do we really get their attention onto those communications so that's one big challenge one big expectations which our customers have actually put forward for, to us the second big area and the second big expectation which our customers have had uh, with uh, uh, when when we talk to them is 
is that they've seen that a lot of their data is siloed. It is, it is distributed across multiple stacks, marketing tech stacks they are using, or probably they are just siloed in, in different CRM, POS terminals, and analytics platform. And what, what really is lacking right now is a single view of a customer. And if you do not have a single view of your customer, you are not going to be able to do more personalized communication across different digital channels. So these are two clear uh, you know, challenges uh, our customers and y'all have actually called out to us. And over the last 18 odd months, our team has been working tirelessly to see really how we can help brands solve this problem. And I'm very happy to announce today the biggest uh, product release we will be having in FY20 in, in calendar year 2022 is going to be the customer data platform. This is going to be one single platform which will basically help brands stitch data across multiple data sources. They will be able to take data from different data sources. It could be Shopify, Apps Flyer, Branch, or a POS terminal. Ingest their data and build a single unified view of the customer. So at a given point of time, you can exactly see where your customer is, how many transactions has he done, what's the total lifetime value, what's the total revenue he has contributed, to you and basis that now the, the, the Raman platform, the AI and the in machine learning platform can actually help you recommend what's going to be the next segment of users who have highly, uh, who, who have a likeliness of purchasing a product X versus a segment of users who have a likely, who have a likelihood of uninstalling your app or probably, you know, uh, probably you know, add or converting a product from the cart. So with this, uh, CDP platform, I think you will be able to do a lot more uh, with your customer data, with your marketing campaigns, and build a lot more personalized contextual campaigns for your consumers. And once, and with, with the CDP platform coming in, the promise which Netcore wants to give it to its customers is that we will be helping you unify your customer communication your customer engagement and product and product experience to help you give a great digital experience to your customers. Netcore started with its communication stack in 2007. We moved on to offering the engagement stack in 2016. And in 2020, with the acquisition of Hansel.io, we moved into the product experience stack. And now with the CDP platform, our promise is to help you give a digital experience stack where you will not just be able to get a unified view of your customer, you'll be able to analyze the data, you'll be able to build the customer engagement campaigns. At the same time, you'll be able to personalize and improve the overall experience which your consumers are having across multiple digital channels. Channels could vary from an email to a web to an app. It could be WhatsApp, which is now becoming a very important channel of communication. And at the same time, the platform would be able to integrate a lot of third party connectors out there because that's where the data is going to kind of get also ingested into the CDP platform. So this is how we, we, we see the, the overall stack of Netcore getting built out. One of the, there are four guiding principles of what we want to adopt for, for not just FI 2022, uh, for, for the calendar year 2022 and ahead, uh, but there are clear four principles we, around which the product is getting built. One, how do we help y'all to reach out to your customers in a much better way. How do we help you increase the reachability to your customers? It could be sending the emails at the right time or the notifications, uh, which can give you the highest engagement or at the same time, adding more channels onto the platform. And there are new channels now coming up with WhatsApp opening it up for promotional messages. You have WhatsApp, you have Google RCS uh, and many other such channels like Viber and everyone coming in where so helping helping brands reach out to their consumers across more across more channels and at the right at the same at the right time. The second, I think, is the more important as as product managers, as marketers, as growth managers. Experimentation is going to be very critical for you to build better marketing campaigns. And one of the promises which we want to give to you is that we're going to make our platform so very good and so very no code so that you can actually create a lot of experimentation without actually any, any handholding or any, any code writing. So this way you can do a lot of experimentation, create a lot of interesting marketing campaigns and see what really works for you and not. The third guiding principle is helping you get easy access to your data 
and bringing in more machine learning, AI intelligence, which can help you take actionable insights on those, in, uh, on those data points which you can see on the platform. So a lot of it today uh, is getting powered through a Raman platform and we hope that we continuously keep building on top of that so that you can basically do a lot of a lot of action, a lot of actions on a lot of interesting insights you see on the platform. And the fourth and the most important guiding principle for us is to make sure that in all what we do across our products is how do you basically create very personalized uh, digital experience for your consumers. I think that's going to be the key uh, trend as we go forward. We all as 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 consumers, we all love Netflix, Amazon, and some of the other uh, brands because of the sheer fact that the kind of experience they give to us as consumers is very personalized, it's very relevant. And that's going to be one of our driving principles as we go forward is how do we really help brands create those kind of experiences for their consumers. So overall, that's, that's what our uh, roadmap uh, overall looks like. You'll hear a lot about what we have done, what we are going to do from Kedar, uh, uh, in, in the coming sessions, but uh, thank you very much, everyone, for for being here. It was a, a it's a real pleasure to have you all on this forum, and we'd love to hear to a lot of input feedback from you as we go along. Thank you very much, Kalpit. The very intense keynote. I'm sure um, everybody is very excited about um, the upcoming digital experience stack. The next part of the agenda is the new PX mandate, right? Where we're talking about product experiences. Now, I'm going to be inviting our uh, next speaker, Mr. Kedar Parikh, who heads the product management at uh, Netco Cloud. This person uh, loves to travel. Uh, he loves biking on weekends. And uh, apart from that, um, yes, he's a great person uh, to learn from if, if you're curious about data science or anything related to technology, right? Hi, Kedar, welcome. Hi, Pradeep. Thanks, thanks for the welcome. And uh, thanks a lot, everyone who has joined this afternoon. Uh, looking forward to some great interactions and showcasing some exciting stuff that we have developed. I'll, I'll start with a bit of uh, uh, theory around nudges. And uh, nudges are basically tiny hints which push you in the right direction, right? But at the same time, uh, leave all other options open. And we have been seeing nudges uh, fairly common in our real life. In fact, this whole concept of nudges was kind of evangelized uh, in 2008 by the book, uh, in a book by the same name, right? And the, here are some real world examples, right? What you see is, let's say a staircase with uh, footsteps leading to the staircase, while obviously the escalators are there on the either side, but this is a gentle nudge to motivate people to take the steps, live a little bit a better and healthy life, right? You got to work a bit uh, as you climb instead of taking the easier way out, uh, the escalators, right? Similarly, uh, this was the image on the, the top left is uh, something that was done as an experiment in Copenhagen where there were footsteps leading to garbage bins and naturally this resolved a lot of littering on the road, right? So this has been successfully uh, kind of practiced in uh, real life. And these principles also hold true, right, in our digital lives. And and uh, things like, uh, yeah, this is not new to us, right? Products that make life easier for the users are obviously uh, favored a lot versus uh, uh, products that are a lot more complex and difficult, right? Uh, people tend to, uh, uh, don't tend to follow through completely, right? And then, Nudges comes to your rescue and we'll some, uh, see some quick examples, right? For example, nudges that streamline your entire onboarding of user, a step-by-step -step walkthrough of your app, right? That makes for great adoption, uh, great activation, right? So these are nudges that <clears throat> kind, of, kind of walk you through the entire journey of activation until you discover the value from the product. Another example is nudges that highlight certain features and promote feature adoption. And this is a very big problem today, honestly, if you ask me, right? Uh, a fun fact, uh, uh, dating back to 2006, when Microsoft uh, kind of conducted a poll for Microsoft Office, asking people what, what exciting features would you like to see in Microsoft Office? And the fact is of all the features submitted, 
85 to 90 percent of the features were already there in the previous version right so now you understand and uh, uh, obviously i'm not saying microsoft office is fairly complex but i i'm sure some of you would relate to this right we as b2c product managers would have encountered similar situations in the past where there are features in the product who struggle for adoption even worst people request for the same features not knowing that they are already there so this is where nudges come to your rescue and help you in product onboarding feature discovery and as a result of which improving overall product experience right and we see the, uh, see them everywhere google is using that so is uh, netflix uh, so uh, so is zero that right we recently so the zero the founders talking a lot about nudges and these nudges when done in the right context right help help your users save a lot of frustration for instance you having a trigger already on a stock that you are buying right could save you a lot of financial losses i think google does phenomenally well when when you say hey here is an attachment and you forget making the attaching that attachment right that nudge saying did you forget an attachment saves you a lot of frustration and this is what these simple things these simple nudges is what actually improves the experience of the product right and let's see what uh, what other benefits do these nudges bring in right so they help you increase conversions they uh, help you move users down the conversion funnel one step at at a time nudging users at every point of drop off they increase the average time spent on an app right promote much better engagement on that they enhance user activation using a great onboarding flow a flow that takes the user to the aha moment in the application obviously improves feature discovery and user retention this is netcore's promise of uh, delivering a pro uh, seamless product experience in a absolute no code way and and you will see the magic of no code right but let's look at some benefits so anything uh, that that you plan to do internally right you could potentially figure out points of friction you could then go about developing these nudges in your app uh, the normal cycle is it would take you at least 15 days of development follow through by a qa and app release and then 15 days to wait for users to update their app right so the normal cycle of finding a point of friction and then deploying a nudge to improve the product experience typically would span anywhere between 30 to 45 days right with what innovation we have brought this entire cycle gets reduced to 15 minutes flat right and the benefits are obvious uh, you could do a lot of experimentation on the fly it brings great agility to product teams you don't have to worry about app releases the moment you deploy a nudge right the nudge is live the very next moment on all the users who are interacting on your app that's the beauty of this right so obviously uh, takes out dependency of the developers which are obviously scarce today and uh, you don't have to wait for app releases and the beauty doesn't stop here right we are continuously extending the catalog of nudges that comes pre-built right be it beacons be it tool tips be it coach marks be it overlays and these are increasing by every sprint that we release and we'll see these in the real action how seamless it is to deploy a nudge in flat 15 minutes Right, and these are some exciting nudges. Like I said, we are continuously adding to the catalog of nudges. Uh, these are some uh, interesting, innovative nudges to look forward to. For instance, video nudges, right? And uh, FOMO tags. Uh, FOMO tags are obviously uh, uh, quite widely used. Uh, they, they build upon the human psychology of uh, uh, social proofing or digital, uh, uh, digital FOMO, right? So if there are 30 users who have bought something in last one hour, that's sort of a subtle confirmation to a human mind saying this product is naturally quite good. So you could use these FOMO tags to highlight certain uh, products or services to nudge users to quickly opt out, uh, opt in for some of those, right? Having said that, let's, let's see uh, nudges in action. And uh, I call upon Pradeep to quickly give us a demo. Thank you, Kedar. So here we go. We are looking at the PX panel. And uh, with the first look um, on the home dashboard, you will be seeing a couple of apps that you have already set up with the panel, right? So let's assume um, this is the app that you would want to launch this product experience nudge on. Okay? So you will have to select that app. 
and it will take you to all the nudge journeys that you are already run. Right? So this will give you a full-fledged high-level view of what all journeys are running, which ones are active, which ones are inactive, and which ones are in draft stage. Right? So uh, for our exercise, let's go ahead and create a new nudge. Let's name it saying edge. And here you also have an option to select what is your journey goal. Okay? So let's assume your journey goal here is to add money. Okay? So you will select that specific goal and you will say save. Okay? So then it will take you to the journey builder. Now here the first step of building the nudge journey is to define the audience. So when you click on define audience, you have a chance, you have an option to choose between going live with this nudge to all the users or just a segment of users, right? So I'm going to be selecting, let's say a segment of users who are new. Right? So I'll click on yes. The next option that you have here is if you would like to roll out this nudge um, in stages in different variant formats or do you want to roll out the nudge to all the audience in one go or maybe in case uh, you would want to really roll it out in phases and test it out and see how these nudges are working in comparison to a control group right so if that is the choice then you're looking at roll out nudges in phases click on proceed now here you will see that yes, if my users are in this particular segment, I would like to roll out this nudge. I'm going to click here and select on what percentage of users should be receiving this nudge. So for example, if I want 20% of my users to see the nudge, I will click on 20% and the remaining 80% of the users will experience the app in its default state, right? And now I'm going to click here to define my nudge. And uh, when I click here, I have to give this a name. So let's say uh, I'm giving this name demo. And I will be shown all the different uh, kinds of nudges uh, that I have to leverage, right? So here you're seeing a couple of tooltip nudges. Here you're seeing a, a tooltip nudge with a text button and image. And uh, you're seeing beacons. Uh, you're seeing spotlights if you have to show a new feature in here. If you have just launched a new feature and you want to highlight that, you can go in for this option, right? So there are several options. For example, a FOMO tag, if there is something uh, that you have released newly, you want to just uh, put a uh, shout out there, you can use this nudge, right? So uh, let's say if I'm looking at this nudge, then I click on continue. The next option is I will have to pair a test device, right? So um, you can create your own many different test groups of uh, test devices. And I'm going to select one specific device and call it for pairing. Now, when I do that, um, the application is going to scan your app screen and it's going to capture and record each and every element in your screen. Right? And once it captures the elements on your screen, then you can select which specific element that you want to um, uh, highlight this nudge on. Right? So for example, I have just captured the home screen of my app. And as you can see, when I move my mouse pointer around the home screen of the app, I will be shown uh, if I want to have this nudge, especially on that specific icon or this entire option over. So for example, if um, I have just launched this new feature of uh, uh, bank, right, where, you, where people can um, uh, add in their banks and they can make a financial transaction, then I'm going to click on this specific element. And here, immediately you will see the text and the messages that you do. So if I click on this, then I will be given an option of what text that I want to write. So I will say, hey, uh, um, Add in your bank details. Okay. 
time the details here, right? So for example, if that is the text that I want to drive, right? Then I'm going to say, click continue. I can also customize the action buttons, the colors of the button, how I want it to be so that it matches with your um, brand guidelines. And after that, I click on continue. Then I'm given the option as to when I want to trigger the specific journey, right? On what specific action. If a user has just launched the app for the first time, if there's a new user, or if uh, it's a contextual walkthrough where you want to set up this nudge bases the action that the user takes on a previous nudge, right? So I have uh, several different options here. And I also have options to select if this nudge should be shown every time, or if there is a specific version of the app that I want to show this nudge or something, right? So uh, if I'm going to select every time and show this nudge, then publish it. So, so that's about a small demo. So uh, what we have today for you, in addition to the PX and the demo, there's also a success story from one of our fast growing customers, uh, Kata Book, right? And uh, we have Miss um, Satvika Rajiv, who is from the growth marketing team. Um, and Miss Satvika is uh, uh, a Facebook blueprint and as well as a Google certified media planner. And she's worked in several companies like Bharat Matrimony, Jaguar Group, and uh, at Kata Book, she is driving growth uh, for the app. And we also have Mr. Joshua, uh, who is the lead product manager at Kata Book. And uh, he has roughly about six years of product management experience. And he's worked in several companies like Project, Mitra, Renta Mojo, and Housing.com. So, uh, uh, very warm welcome to Joshua and uh, Satvika. Uh, so, thank you for the introduction. I I think uh, you know, we, we can sort of move on to the pieces that we wanted to discuss on this call. Uh, so I'll just start quickly with a brief about Khata Book for those of you who may not know about Khata Book. Uh, we are a, you know, an organization that enables my MSMEs, the micro, small and medium enterprises in India and those merchants to digitize their bookkeeping and track all the transactions safely and securely, right? So the primary play here is, you know, building uh, new age apps for this segment of users, which digitizes a lot of their daily business experiences and creates efficiencies for them in terms of cost, in terms of time, in terms of collections and so on. Uh, in terms of where we are as a company, you know, we're running at about 10 million monthly active users at this point, and we recently closed a series C round as well and are primed for a lot of growth, hopefully over the next couple of years. Uh, within Khata Book, there was a specific app that I was working on a few months back as well. Uh, this app is called Pagar Khata. So apart from the core Khata or ledger use case that Khata Book works on, we have a bunch of other offerings and other use cases for the same set of users. So in addition to bookkeeping, Pagar Khata is more or less the staff management solutions for MSMEs. That if you are a business uh, person who on an M M S as an MSME, you will be able to manage a lot of your use cases around staff, which is basically adding your staff onto the app being able to mark their attendance in various forms, being able to do the salary calculations, being able to broadcast uh, you know, SMSs or information to your staff and overall just managing the salary payouts and the record, records of salaries as well on the app. Uh, as part of the app, you know, we, we noticed that in terms of our growth funnels, uh, if someone completes a critical action, which we identified as adding a staff member, then they sort of get retained on the app. So most of our dropout would come if a user has downloaded the app, they've navigated to the onboarding experience or the home screen, but they've not been able to figure out the critical value propositions or how to proceed. Uh, so that was the challenge, right? That there was low product adoption after app downloads, but you know, probably due to a lack of onboarding guidance. But, but the fact was that, you know, based on retrospective data, we saw that if we could at least nudge users to add their staff members, after that, the product flow was simplified enough to let them derive value and sort of retain on the app. Uh, so based on this, we heard about uh, Hansel as a use case. Uh, what appealed to us the most was the fact that we could quickly experiment using this platform. Uh, I'll move over to Satvika, then you can describe how we sort of used, uh, you know, Netcore's Hansel product and, uh, you know, moved a lot of metrics towards our goal of uh, activating users on this app. Over to you, Satvika. Yeah. 
Thank you so much. So like Joe mentioned, our silver lining with this golden challenge um, was Netco's no-code product experience platform. We were able to create various segments of users based on different user event properties, languages, and more, which helped us understand the stage at which the merchant was in the life cycle within the app, and then uh, guide them step-by-step step to the right action. This was the first time that uh, we were really able to deep dive into the behavioral science of the product Pagar Khata and play around with our communication to nudge that user to take the required action. Our strategy uh, was to A-B test as such. Uh, we wanted to understand the impact of these nudges versus the default experience. And while working with Netco, their unique ability to be able to A-B test allowed us to explore different variants at one time. In our strategy, we decided to take on the challenge of onboarding a user. Like Joe mentioned, we are the goal event of addition of a staff. As our understanding was that if a user adds even one staff, they would better understand the use case of our app. To begin with, we set up two variants, which were rolled out to English users of the app, who were launching the app for the very first time. And they were being A-B test against the default experience at 20% uh, versus approximately 60%. But what we really wanted to test out was that does a user really want to be guided? And if so, does that element of choice help improve the conversion percentage? So the only difference between variant one and variant two on your screen was that element of choice. Variant one was simple or it had a question, do you want us to help you get started? And if the answer was yes, they would be given relevant nudges to add a star. If the answer was no, they would be provided with the default experience to explore the app on their own. In variant two, uh, there was no element of choice. We would start feeding the nudges to them to guide them on how to add a staff. After a couple of minutes of them exploring the app and being inactive, because the assumption might be that they are stuck or they don't know what to do on the app now. And Netco offered us a host of well-designed nudges uh, from spotlights to tooltips. We were also able to customize it to our brand fonts and colors, which made it appear much more seamless. And once all of this was done and it was set up, uh, we were eagerly awaiting the results. So the results that we saw was that we were able to record a higher conversion rate from the A-B test across both variants. What surprised us was that the choice element actually provided a lower uplift with around 3.3x more users adding staff details. And variant two, which was our star variant, saw 3.5x rise in the number of users adding a staff detail. This helped us drastically improve our onboarding percentage from login to addition of the first staff. Coming to our experience with uh, Netco's no-code product experience platform, uh, the two main benefits were agility and speed at which we were able to set up these nudges and the unique power to A-B test multivariate communications across one journey. So we were able to cross test variant one against variant two and both of them against the default variant and this definitely helped us save the time of setting up multiple A-B tests that would get us the data to give the same results. And uh, the reduced engineering efforts enabled our product engagement team to set up these journeys in no time. We were able to deliver a better onboarding experience very easily to our users using the PX experience. Thank you so much, Satvika, for sharing a very uh, insightful um, topic and, and your experience on, on how it really helped your business. Uh, we could see how uh, it really helped improve the user adoption by 3.5x, which is really brilliant. Right, so now we slide back to our agenda of uh, uh, the next section, which is going to be scaling omni-channel customer engagement. We are going to be discussing about business triggers in journeys. So normally in journeys, uh, when we talk about journeys, what comes to our mind is... Uh, um, yes, if a user satisfies a set of conditions, then uh, let's trigger out a communication to him, right? Um, but often speaking to marketers, um, they have uh, always come back with a request saying, hey, you know, uh, what if there is a price drop in our catalog, product catalog? What if, uh, let's say, we did not have a product and it's back in stock, right? Or uh, let's say um, a travel agency, right? Uh, there is a drop in price fare and, and suddenly the trip to Dubai because of uh, all the uh, expo happening is, uh, you know, reduced for the next three days. How can we uh, target users um, in those occasions? Right? And for uh, these occasions is where uh, we have built the business triggers. Right? So a couple of use cases that you might want to uh, 
um, think of is uh, if you're in the e-commerce industry, a back in stock um, or a price drop, new arrivals, stock running out, these are all a couple of use cases that you can leverage. If you're in, uh, let's say a travel industry, price drops, uh, flight rescheduled, flights delayed, uh, rooms running out, they all can be a couple of business views. So essentially you take um, a specific event that has occurred in your business and you target the users uh, who would be most likely uh, to engage with it. We also have um, a new feature in Journeys, which is a geofence. So far uh, until now, you've had geofence as a separate feature, right? Where you could kind of uh, uh, draw a segment and target users, this is the geofence. But um, with this new change, we are empowering the marketers to also engage with the customers in Journeys, right? You can have a, a set of options lined up uh, after maybe you send out an email, then you can again follow up if the users have actioned on it, and then again retarget them with an app push notification or a web push notification and so on, right? And not just that, um, you do have um, uh, geofence triggers enabled basis, uh, their location uh, data, whether they enter or they exit or they're just dwelling. Control groups, you know, as marketers, we have always uh, leveraged journeys. Right? automating communications to users. But uh, there have been always questions, right? Hey, how uh, efficient or what is the impact of these journeys? What if we just did not have these journeys? What do you think uh, uh, would have happened, right? So uh, this control group in journeys is going to give you that leverage to test journeys in real time and see if they really impact your customer engagement or not. Right? So you can choose a segment of uh, uh, audience that you want to target with a journey, right? Or maybe a specific activity, uh, uh, you know, and you can configure a control group such a way that, yes, uh, whatever happens, that specific uh, audience of uh, control group will not receive any communication. And this will be randomly uh, picked uh, based the uh, segment of users that fit into these journeys. And um, is there some way how um, you know I can be sure of uh, what communication is working out for me or not, right? Uh, this is the time. Is it the best time to send out a journey? Uh, this communication is it is it the right channel that I'm using? Is it the right message I'm using? Yes, it is journeys. But still, can I experiment within the journeys? Can I learn more and can I optimize my journeys, right? And um, we have split action. Uh, as, as a new feature uh, in Journeys, which is going to help you um, explore different combinations of uh, such kind of variants and uh, fine tune your overall journeys. Okay? So what are all the different options that you can uh, test in a journey? Now with the split action, uh, you can test different variants of subject lines, you can test different variants of content, uh, channels, different wait time condition. You know, should I wait for, um, 30 minutes, should I wait for one hour? You can test it out with the split action in journeys, right? Uh, you can test out different flows of journeys and see which one is bringing you maximum conversions, right? I'm just going to briefly uh, show you how this works in, in the journey setup, right? So we are in, in the Netcore uh, panel and I'm just going to start um, creating a new journey. So I have clicked on the create button and uh, you get to see different options here. And uh, you, know, you can start um, analyzing user behavior. You can start creating a template or manage contacts where you essentially add, import, or create segments. So what we want to do here is create a journey. Right? So I'm going to click on engage with users. And immediately I can see all the options uh, that I can uh, do where I can send emails or SMS or app push, in-app messages, uh, personalized content and so on. So what I'm gonna do is choose journey because that is what we wanna do here. Right, and I'm taken to the journey builder. Now um, with the journey builder, yes, we uh, have a couple of uh, ready journeys that are available for um, a set of industries like you know, if e-commerce, you can, uh, immediately get started with a readily built journey for 
uh, cart abandonment or preventing churn of existing users. Uh, for our use case, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, start creating a, a new journey, right? And uh, we're going to give this journey a name, let's say edge demo journey. And uh, we're going to choose start date is today. And uh, let's say I want to end it in, in the next two days. And I have different options to choose uh, with respect to the journey goal. I can select the specific goal that I want to try. Um, if it is um, availing an offer or a cart purchase, uh, uh, so I'm going to select that specific goal. I can also choose the time that I want to track this uh, conversion event for. And here is the control group that we discussed, right? So um, now, if this is a cart abandonment journey, if there are 100 people who have abandoned the cart in the last 24 hours, for example, right? I can choose a control group here by percentage or by list. So if I say by percentage, and if I choose a number 20, then 20% 20 of the users will not receive uh, any communication from this cart abandonment journey. And it's a very good insight for a marketer to really understand what is the impact of this journey um, vis a vis, you know, not going to a customer, right? The other option is by list, where here I can specifically choose telling that, hey, whatever happens, right? These are my bunch of users who should never receive any communication from this journey. They are fixed, right? So then I upload my list of customers and they would never receive a communication and they become a part of your control group, right? Now, um, yeah, what we're going to do is we are going to look into business activity triggers now. So let's say uh, if I have to build my journey, if I have to start my journey, right? I have different options. I can get started with activities, segments, lists, which you already know. Um, we just saw business activity as, as a new feature. So I'm gonna choose business activity here. I've just drag dropped that as the trigger condition. I'm gonna click on this to see more options under the business activity. And uh, this is essentially where you will start seeing the different options that are there. For example, if an item is back in stock or if there is a price drop or if there are new arrivals and so on. So you choose that specific activity. You choose that specific target audience who should be alerted in case of the specific activity. And then you choose your action saying, hey, you know, I want to communicate this via an email or via an SMS or via an app, right? As easy as that. Now, the other feature that we saw was the geofence target. So we're going to start this journey again with the geofence here. Now, if I click on geofence to reveal the different options, as I mentioned, we can target users if they enter a new geofence, right? So I have, uh, let's say for an example, uh, I'm a telecom operator and uh, I want to target people, whoever reaches um, Bangalore International Airport. Right, and um, it could be because I want to share some uh, options related to roaming, uh, right? And if that is the case, then I can use enter as an option. Or if people are exiting from a specific geofence trigger, uh, let's say if uh, I want to uh, target a set of users who have just visited a mall and they're exiting the mall, then maybe I can you know, kind of thank them for experience, right? If, if you have a physical store um, and they are around that area, then again, you can use these options to target those users. Okay. So uh, we'll just see how this works. So if I'm going to choose enter as an activity, the next one here is uh, I'm going to choose a set of geofence groups. So these are groups where you can um, uh, configure them in, in your uh, geofence options where you can select uh, that specific area and uh, which you have already configured basis, uh, the location or basis, the uh, radius of, of, of the area that you want to select. So you choose those geofence options and uh, you, choose, you get an option to choose if the users should uh, get the notification the first time they enter or every time they enter uh, that location. So then again, I choose that option and there you go, right? Then next you can start uh, communicating to that user uh, via an email or SMS or any channel. We are going to um, check out one more feature in the CE panel that we have launched, which is the user path analysis, right? 
And um, about this feature, right? Uh, usually marketers would want to understand um, what their users are doing uh, once they get into the app, right? Yes, we track different events. We um, know uh, whether a user is looking at this particular product or you know, if he's taking the specific action or not. But do we really know how a user is traversing across the app, right? What a user essentially does the first thing after he launches the app or what are the three things that a user did before uninstalling the app, right? Or if there is path uh, step A to step B and, and you uh, feel that, yes, these are the two steps that a user should take to reach uh, step B, but maybe the user could be doing something else, right? So our, how do we track all that, right? And that is where we are bringing you the user path analysis. And this is going to be helping you big time in understanding how the users navigate across your app. And this is um, a real insight for our UX um, specialists to optimize your app's UI and, and UX. Here, we also have our uh, customer top career from Indonesia, uh, who's a career portal. And uh, we have Ms. Diana Thanu, who's the CEO of Top Career Indonesia to speak with us on uh, how uh, user path analysis helped um, their business grow the customer engagement. Thank you, Ms. Diana Thanu, for being here. Over to you. Thank you, Pradeep. Thank you. Okay. So, um, as what Pradeep said before, that um, we are a top curry. Top curry is um, we are a curry portal that uh, we aim for the young Indonesian people, uh, because uh, I realized uh, based on um in Indonesia, uh, Indonesia young Indonesian people um really quite like need help um to get all the informations for their uh, professionals career and also for uh, if they want to become an entrepreneurs, but um the 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 problem is uh, some of the Indonesian people that don't they don't realize uh, that actually they um, need help uh, because uh, they thought that um, if they already finish their schools they just have to apply jobs and there will be a high probability that they will be hired. But um, what happens in Indonesia? There are much gap uh, between um, the graduates and also how the industry, all the the employers um, currently are looking for uh, people to work with, and that's why uh, we built a uh, top career to help them um, to get uh, the the solutions um, to build their career and being as professionals and also an entrepreneurs. So. Um, we collaborate with a lot of stakeholders, um, not only for um, like a private sectors, but also governments. Uh, we help to give all the informations and also we uh, work with um, the biggest in associations as well um, to, to help all those uh, people, the young people, um, to be able to get uh, their solutions uh, for what they're looking for. So, um, our goal is um, very simple. Why we use Netcore? Um, we have uh, built a top car for, I think, almost five years, uh, no, almost six years. And we have uh, quite a difficulty to understand our customers. And um, when we found out about Netcore, uh, I think it's uh, it's a very good solution for our goal, which is uh, we wanna have like, um, to know uh, the you our how our users actually uh, behave or um, do through our apps, and then how our users also um, knowing them uh, where do they go for each um, features to another one. So it's quite very important for us because uh, for um, people who have a business in through online. Uh, of course, we want to know, uh, we want to get a better uh, conversions and also retentions for our users. To get that, uh, we have to know um, the, their, their actions and we have to know their behavior. Uh, that's why we use a net core for this. And um, the challenge is before that um, our conversions rate is uh, quite low. So the users that actually is already get into our apps, they don't come back to us. And then um, 
So we want to have uh, to fix that. Uh, the conversion rates have to be increased and then to have to be improved to, be, to get a better qualified. And then also um, the, our clients, everyone's like, will be happy to, uh, to use our service. And um, the silver lining that we have before, like um, the problems that we have, we don't understand clearly the behavior of our users. We also have difficulty in feeding the relevant features. As you know that if you um, check our apps now, um, as to help the all those young people, uh, we need to have a few features to help them, uh, such as uh, first step, uh, once they already get into our apps, they need to know that uh, their talents, and then they also need to be able to um, improve their skills, uh, not only the soft skills, but also the hard skills. So um, how to get to understand that, um, we have to feed uh, them to the, real, to the relevant features. And uh, we want to improve um, to be able um, to get uh, potentials and also the conversions for them to get the jobs. So in, um, in our strategies that um, we reform our apps uh, this year, and then um, to reform our apps, of, of course, we want to know as well. We have to understand uh, which part is um, the one that we need to improve and what else that um, the users need actually before they apply for a job. And also after applying a job, um, the difference is be uh, before that um, the conversion rate that people get hired is actually very low, but they don't understand what the problem with us, uh, with them as well. Uh, they thought that, okay, um, I've already applied for 10 jobs, but I don't get any job uh, from Topkari. But the problem is actually they are uh, very lack or they are not very good in interview or also their CV is not very qualified to our clients, but they don't get fit of that. And then they, they don't know like uh, what kind of uh, skills that they are actually need to be improved to get those jobs. So um, so the strategy for us to, um, to reframe our apps is actually to help them to get the journey from one step to the end of the journey. It becomes so clear and then they will get uh, the job easier. And then so um, the user interface and the user experience that we um, improve and then we reform, it's actually to, uh, to ensure the maximum conversions with the uh, less steps possible as, as possible. Um, this is one of the segmented communications that actually we build. So um, after they apply, we give them like, um, competition insight. So we tell them that, hey, do you want to know that actually uh, your CV is not uh, very qualified compared with the other comp uh, the other uh, appliers or the other um, people who actually apply for those jobs? And don't, before that, we don't have this kind of um, journey, uh, but the, in the net core, um, we can build this kind of st uh, steps, which is uh, we know that um, the people who don't uh, who don't have uh, that qualified, they will be able to find out that uh, they are uh, in, on what stage. And then so they can improve uh, after that, they can improve their skills and then be able to hire the positions that actually very relevant to them. So because we are uh, providing those steps, actually our uh, users are becoming more happier. Uh, they find out that um, they, they now, they know that um, Tokar has a very, uh, quite relevant features for them to help them to get a job. Uh, before that, like uh, they kind of like that, not really knowing like um, which one is the lag behind for them to get a job. Um, after we have been using um, Netcore for nine, uh, like around three months, um, actually we are uh, quite very good in improving in um, our daily active users. Um, it's improving like 43%. We know when um, to engage our users, what time, and then uh, when we do have to get the relevant information. Once there are new contents, they will get the first, and then they will get um, information and um, notified by that. And so, um, at, and um, they also like um, try currently trying all the features that we have before they only applying jobs, but now they are quite um, engaging with us. 
uh, for example, uh, I think after using the NetCore, um, 60% of our users are return, returning to our apps, and then they are spending like around 20 minutes in our apps to apply jobs. Before, it's only like three until five minutes, which are very, we are very quite happy uh, because um, the NetCore is guiding them um, to use uh, all the features that we have. 70% uh, uh, increasing in job applications and then um, they also have uh, joining the mentorship that we have which is in top car clinic it's um, the the number is quite high like 42% uh, actually um, increasing and improving um, so I think that's those experience that we have in um, in the network but of course um, except that we also want to show you guys like uh, what the use our users say mentioning about um, top car itself if you can see that um, now they are uh, mentioning that uh, we have a very good design and friendly user, user interface and it's a very easy to use um, it, it, it is because we get uh, the feedback um, and then we get we know the behavior from our users if they uh, drop off then it's something wrong with this um, path and then so we have uh, we our developers uh, like uh, you know, and our products like very quick um, trying to find out why and then so we can solve those problems, which is a very good for us. I think, yeah, that's all for our, um, uh, what we have been filled um, by, using top, uh, by using the NetCore. Hopefully it helps. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Udayana. In fact, that was very detailed the way have you explained what was the problem that your customers were facing with the app and how the user path analysis really helped you understand um, the user behavior and, and the entire story of how you um, actually went about customizing the UI uh, to, to, to give them a great UX, right, user experience. Um, in fact, whenever we talk about user experience, um, this, this picture is what comes to my mind. Um, where we think that, yes, we have a great design, but then unless we really see how the users are using uh, the product, the app, um, we, we really don't know much. Right now, uh, sliding back to our agenda here with Raman, and uh, this is where um, I'm going to be inviting my uh, colleague, uh, Kedar, to take over. Yeah, thanks once again, Pradeep. I'll quickly share my screen and... Uh continue sharing some exciting things that we have been doing. Yeah, so uh, just just want to share uh, uh, one single quote that we believe at NetCore uh, and which is Raman's guiding principle, right? So predicting future isn't magic, it's actually science. And uh, to, be, to be more precise, it's data science. Yeah, so, so what we have done uh, is brought this interesting capability in hands of a marketer who can now predict the future, right? Predict segments of users who are likely to behave in a certain way and then use that information to further optimize uh, the targeting, improve the campaigns and uh, overall improvise the spends, return, return on spends, right? So, so we believe with greater automation and uh, AI assistance, the marketers will have enough time or rather more time to focus on most important things that matter to them, which is focus on customers, focus on creativity and focus on innovation, right? While, while you let all the number crunching left onto Raman who analyzes historical behavior of users and then is able to predict uh, how certain group of users are, how a cohort will behave, right? Or if there is a certain behavior in mind, which set of users are most likely to uh, achieve that behavior, right? So let's let's look at some use cases. And this uh, uh, is now generally available to our customers. And feel free to reach out to your CSMs uh, uh, for some exciting use cases. And use cases could be users who are likely to engage with a campaign, right? So uh, wouldn't it be great to know who will most likely be, uh, be responding to a particular email or app notification campaign. And what, what problem it solves is not only improves your campaign ROI, campaign outcome and metrics, but it also improves the customer experience, right? So you don't send irrelevant communication to a cohort of users who are not likely to resonate with that particular campaign, 
right? So improves uh, customer experience as well as your marketing KPIs, a win-win for both. Uh, there is users who are likely to purchase in the next seven days, right? That's, that's something great to know. A uh, few other use cases, users likely to convert uh, with a cross-sell campaign, right? Knowing that upfront would definitely improve your targeting and campaigns, uh, cross-sell campaigns to be specific. Knowing users who are likely to uninstall and, and mind you, this is a lot better than a win-back campaign. A win-back campaign is too late in the game where you have already lost the customer, right? You will end up spending a lot of uh, uh, marketing dollars to acquire the same user again from a Facebook or a Google or, or a YouTube, right? Uh, using lots of dollars. But if you know that this user is likely to churn, you can plan those interventions right while you have time. And Raman brings this power to you now. Right. And not only that, Raman also gives this power to you in real time. Right. So the, these are not just segment of users that you curate and then blast off campaigns on. These are interventions that Raman empowers your web messages and nudges in the real time while users on your website are on your website. Let's take some examples or use cases. So while a user is currently shopping on the website, Raman is able to predict if a user is likely to abandon a cart and pop up a discount only then, right? So imagine uh, not randomly showing a discount to everyone, but based on propensity of a user to abandon the cart, showing being able to show a discount in real time and then ensuring you move the user down the funnel towards conversion. Another use case, predict if a user is uh, in a wrong category, right? Uh, he or she is just aimlessly browsing throughout the website without uh, being able to uh, uh, close, or close on a particular apparel or a garment, right? Uh, the user is just window shopping. In that case, you can nudge the user uh, uh, to a personalized landing page, a, a page that's full of product recommended for that user and whose propensity of conversion is a lot higher, right? Definitely improves your uh, overall bounce rate, improves your conversion. All of this happening in real time with every single click. Another use case, predict if a user is likely to drop off and only, only then uh, possibly intervene with a discount coupon or an exit intent pop-up, right? And many more such use cases. Similarly, uh, there, are, there are some more surprises uh, that we have planned and these surprises will come uh, uh, to all our customers as part of our new year gifts to them. And we at Netcore have been always a customer centric organization, right? Customer centricity is at our core and we have been listening to our customers and the following two features uh, that I'll talk about has been an outcome of our voice of customer initiative. We today power hundreds of websites. Uh, uh, we, we power personalized uh, interactions on hundreds of websites. We deliver Amazon like product recommendations on these websites and customers have been kind of suggesting saying uh, while, while doing these product recommendations, you tend to kind of uh, mine a lot of data. A lot of data is accessible to you on user behavior. Why don't you help us improve our merchandising? Why don't you help us take better data driven decisions from the data you collect? And we just did that, right? We heard them and what we brought is product performance, right? Product performance analytics is something uh, that tells you what sells on your website and at the same time, goes without saying it also tells you what doesn't sell on your website right so you can do much better sku uh, rationalization you can do much better assortment planning you can do much better merchandising uh, traditionally we have always seen there is a big gap between the merchandiser and the marketer now all of this available on the same platform both to your merchandiser and marketer completely short circuits the cycle and brings a lot of efficiency right and, and these are just some stats, right? Retailers who use advanced analytics clearly outperform uh, the ones that uh, don't, right? Especially the ones that don't act in real time. This is exactly the one kind of insights that we want to deliver uh, to our customers. Just uh, quickly uh, looking at some of the advantages, this helps obviously uh, in inventory management, assortment, breadth and depth, price elasticity, you understand uh, how do the various products perform at various price points. You, this helps you understand consumer trends. It helps you to do campaign management better. And of course, ultimately personalization. A simple example is 
uh, you know which products perform better you use that specific set of products boosted on a specific cohort right knowing that these products work better on a cohort you can easily boost them i'll quickly show you a, a teaser of it how it looks in real life right so this is a quick sneak peek at the product performance analytics uh, which we are releasing as part of larger vision of retail analytics right so what you see is how many products are in stock how many are out of stock discontinued active you get uh, time series metrics of uh, product views add to carts purchases what you also see is your revenue trends uh, across multiple days you see your sales performance you see how many products are left in inventory day on day right most important you see uh, things like which are top performing products right or which are top performing brands or which are top performing categories or sub categories and and these comes with lot of drill downs right so let's look at top performing products naturally you see uh, all the top performing products and it, there is lot of data points available at your disposal right when you look at uh, nike shoes what is the material pattern mrp uh, discount right you see lot of data points available at your disposal quickly uh, so we believe this is going to be uh, immensely useful in the hands of our marketers and merchandisers and and we can't wait uh, to get this in hands of our customers quickly moving on there is one more exciting announcement uh, that we want to do i'll i'll continue on my presentation uh personalized site search and discovery right so in our endeavor to deliver amazon like experiences to our customers and their customers this is one more additional uh, uh and very important uh, capability that we are bringing to our customers very soon which is personalized site search right so essentially your customers are able to get amazon like excellent product search and discovery on your website all powered through the same same platform right and these are some statistics that that i'm sure uh, most of us know but they are at the same time kind of uh, uh, an awakening right so 40 40% of users on the retail website directly go to the search bar especially if the products are lot more need based like a grocery or a or a pharmacy they exactly know what they want to buy right and they'll hit a search if they don't find the product they'll move on to your competitor right it's it's as simple as that consumers who search right have a very high intent to purchase and uh, they they are expected to 2. Uh, convert 2.5 uh, times more likely than someone who doesn't right so you clearly understand these are customers uh, who have very high intent to purchase and it's important that they discover the right products especially when you actually have them in your inventory so this is another exciting capability that we are happy to bring to our customers very soon uh an intelligent search experience that caters to every single shopper's unique needs and an increased product discovery and conversion rate on website so these are our uh, surprises just just two of many other things that we have lined up thank you so much uh, kedar for uh, your session on all the new features related to ai ml and the retail analytics right so um that's that's very interesting in fact um it's a lot of data for retail analysts to uh, mine and uh, understand how their stocks are performing how their inventories are performing and uh, it gives a lot of options for retail analysts to really experiment with um, different pricing and options and manage their campaigns better right um so thank you so much for your time today and uh, just before we um, close the session just want to remind you all that uh, um you can always reach out to your respective customer success manager or your account manager to take uh, these features live on your panel and start using them and uh, our customer success managers are always available for you to answer any questions that you might have and um we wish you a very happy christmas and a happy new year in advance take care thank you all for your time